Welcome to Windsor Dermatology's Healthy Skin Highlights. Tonight is our seventh lecture of a 14 lecture series. Throughout the series, the providers at Windsor Dermatology will discuss multiple different common dermatologic conditions. Tonight is a special dual presentation with two providers, Alexa Hetzel and Brianna Butler. Alexa is a physician assistant at the office who practices general, surgical, and cosmetic dermatology. Alexa graduated from Monmouth University and was inducted into the Phi Alpha Phi National Honor Society celebrating academic excellence. Brianna is also a physician assistant in the office practicing general surgical and cosmetic dermatology. Brianna also graduated from Monmouth University and also received NSCAA Scholar All-American Academic <laughs> Excellence from UConn. There will be time at the end of the presentation for questions. If you have any questions, please type them in the text box and Alexa and Brianna will discuss them at the end of the discussion. We at Windsor Dermatology are thrilled you took the time to join us for this exciting episode of Healthy Skin Highlights, an educational web series with Windsor Dermatology, hosted by Alexa Hetzel and Brianna Butler, talking all things cosmetics. Hi everyone. Hello. I'm Alexa. I'm Brianna. Welcome to our Healthy Skin Highlights. So like Shana said, we are going to discuss all things cosmetic. All things cosmetic in terms of modalities, we will not be talking about topical therapy. So if you have any questions about that, we can definitely get you scheduled for an appointment. So we're gonna review all the different things that we have in our office that we can share with you. So this is kind of the roadmap of what we're going through today. We're gonna to talk about Botox, fillers, microneedling, IPL, PDL, hair laser, CO2 laser, tattoo removal, cool sculpting and sclerotherapy. If there's some things that you don't understand in this list, I promise we will review it as we move forward. So first up is Botox. So what is Botox? Botulinum toxin or Botox has been used for medical purposes for over 50 years. It was approved in 2002 for cosmetic use and it's been used in over 2 million patients so far. What Botox does is it produces a local weakness to the injected muscles. And it temporarily makes forehead lines, frown lines, crow's feet um, look better in adults. So when you come in for an appointment, it's actually pretty quick. It only takes about 10 minutes and you get super tiny injections. I know needles sound scary, but they're really, really small. You barely feel them. It does take about two weeks to see full results, but you will slowly notice some after about 48 hours and every day it'll get better. Um, there's always a chance of bruising because you are putting a needle into the skin. It's not gonna be a big massive bruise. You can just put some cover up on there, it'll go away. Um, minimal downtime is required because you can just get the little injections, move on with your life. You can literally do it at lunch. The only thing is you can't lay down for four hours and you don't wanna exercise for 24 hours. Um, lastly, it only lasts about three to four months. So it is something that you have to keep up with, but it's definitely worth it. So we have a little video for you just to kind of show what a treatment would kind of look like. So you can see the needle there, super tiny. And you can see those white dots are where the multiple little injections would go. It is a little pinch with the needle, but the medication or the Botox itself actually doesn't hurt. No burning, no stinging, nothing like that. There we go. So this is a patient a real Windsor dermatology patient who was treated in the glabellar or the 11 lines area. So right here, so this was her before photo, and this was two weeks later. So what's great about Botox is it delivers a very predictable but subtle result. This doesn't make her face look very, any drastically different, but it actually makes a huge difference and makes her look way more rested, way more relaxed. These lines also will um, be kept from getting any deeper, which is nice. 
This is another example of another patient who had a treatment done in her glabellar or 11 lines. You can see this was before treatment and then this was two weeks later. I think this is also a good one to show that it even lifted up her eyebrows some in the middle there. So she's not as crowded on her eyelids that you can see on the right side. And then this is a good example of a before and after for the crow's feet or around those eyes. When we have a really big smile or we're really excited about something, it's much more obvious to kind of see those pop up. Obviously you still will have the ability to smile, but it just won't make it look as crinkly. So fillers are a little different where they're actually a gel-like substance that's made up of hyaluronic acid, which we naturally make in our body. That's what creates the volume to our skin. Um, fillers is almost if you think of like a putty, it's not going to relax a muscle. It's going to fill up a space. So it adds volume in different areas to help smooth lines, soften creases, enhance your contours like your cheeks and create volume overall for what we lose as we mature. Um, you can see in the left in the picture that there's a bunch of different areas that you can treat. We'll kind of go over them in the videos as we go along, but it's tailored to everybody. There's, you can basically use it anywhere on the face, but when you have a consultation, we'll discuss what's best for you. So here's an example of cheek filler. So in this video, especially with the cheeks, you want to make sure that there's no blood that's withdrawn in the syringe. We want to make sure we do this as safe as possible, but it is then injected straight into this area of the cheek to give volume. Which looks actually scarier than it is because you only have really feeling when the needle's going through the skin. When it's deeper down, you don't have pain. So I know it looks scary because it's straight in, but it's not as painful as it looks. There also is lidocaine in fillers, so that oh, helps with the pain. Yeah. Another example, this is a lip filler. So this one's a little different where you're not going like perpendicular, you're just going to the side of the lip as opposed to straight into the bone. <laughs> move on to our next video. And then click the white. Okay. That's the last one. Yeah. Okay. So with fillers, I think a lot of people get a bad perception of what it's going to look like. Like one filler, one syringe of filler is going to make you look like these crazy celebrities that are out there. But to kind of give us a little bit better of an example of how much is actually in a syringe. So you can kind of use this in terms of a teaspoon. So we usually, we don't use half a syringe too much or 0.5 milliliters, but you can see how little bit it occurs or it takes up in the space of a teaspoon. One syringe is only a fifth of a teaspoon. So um, four syringes or four milliliters is not even a full teaspoon. So you can think about when you're correcting certain things in terms of hollowness or fine lines, how this is not a lot of product. So when you think about the celebrities that have a lot done, like the Real Housewives, they probably have closer to 20 syringes in their face. So as we go through these next photos, we're going to explain to you how, what some of these patients had. And it actually is a little bit deceiving what you think they might actually need or might have had done, because it's, it's more than you think, but still can give you a nice natural look. So this is a good one. She had a combination of Botox and fillers. Um, the photo on the right is her coming back two weeks later. So we did the Botox and the fillers at the same time. And then she came back for those after photos, which is why you could see that the Botox has settled in. Cause we, like we said earlier, it does take two weeks. Um, she had a total of, I believe over 80 units of Botox, which we did in multiple areas, including the forehead, the glabella, the crow's feet, which you can see the crow's feet make a big difference in the side angle, as well as the lines above her eyebrows. Um, we also did some filler, which came up to a total of six syringes. So we did three in the cheeks, so about one and a half on each side, which helps to not just give more that hollowness to make the hollowness goes away, but it helps to lift up the whole face. We also did a syringe and a half around the mouth. So we helped to fill in these lines and down below. And then we did 
That was three, four and a half. Oh, then we did, and it's, we did two syringes in the cheek, in the chin. And then we did two syringes in the chin, which to help, you can see it made it more pronounced to give it that helps with the lips also, but it pushes it out because it was so recessed in the photo on the left. And then I think we did a half a syringe to a full syringe on the lips. So this patient, you can tell, looks very natural. She doesn't look fake. She doesn't look puffy or plastic, but she had a total of six syringes in her face. Now this one, she was over the course of multiple treatments. I think I saw her almost four or five times altogether in increments of every two weeks. She also had some Botox done. Um, but most importantly, we really focused on fillers. She also had three syringes in the cheeks, which you can see in the photo straight on on the left here, how hollowed out they were. That really made her look a little bit older. So we focused on that and gave her that nice cheekbone. Um, and then we did a syringe in these lines around the mouth. And then we did about a syringe and a half to two syringes in her lips. She really wanted to focus on getting lips. She felt like she's never had them before. So we glammed her up. This patient here, she had a little bit less work done, but she did have a total of two syringes, one on each side to this we call the marionette lines and the nasolabial folds. But still you can see gave her a nice subtle difference. And this was immediately afterwards, her treatment. And you can see that two syringes, like if we consult you, people are like two syringes, that's so much. Look how little of a difference it made. It didn't drastically make her look crazy. It just helped to smooth it out. So it makes her look younger, honestly. And here we've got a few different type of lip examples because not everyone has the same lip. That's like, I think something that's a little bit more customized to each person. So you can see throughout these, this photo and the next set of photos that each patient's goal is different, which is why a consultation is so important. So we can understand what you want when you're coming in to see us, what you want to look like. It's also important, the one on the left, she, you could see how small her top lip was in the beginning. She actually took three different sessions to get to her achieved goal of the size she wanted because you can't put too much in at once because everything swells. So you let it swell a little, you come back two to three weeks later and we could slowly add more and more until we get to that desire. Uh, but it is important to know that you're not gonna get everything on one day and you're gonna walk out of there like a new person. You gotta give it multiple treatments. Mm -hmm. This again is another example. This patient here was over two sessions. Yeah, and the one in the, on the left, the one in the middle was actually right after. So you can see it was swollen. And then you can see a few weeks later how it softened out some and the, some of the swelling goes away. And you can see on this patient, she has a little bit of asymmetry, which we all do, but that's something we definitely wanna try to correct and mirror um, with each other. So there are subtle nuances to the treatment and what we're evaluating to make sure that we give you the best symmetry possible as well. And on the right, you can see we also really focused on the lines around her mouth that were really bothering her. Um, and in the corners of her mouth were turned down a little. And you can see we tried to focus on plumping that up. So she had that upturned smile as opposed to she didn't want the big lip. She was worried more about around it. All right, so let's now move on to microneedling also known as collagen induction therapy. And what microneedling does is it stimulates your skin's natural ability to repair itself. So basically what we're doing when we do a microneedling treatment is creating small little micropunctures into the skin. When we do that, then your body will naturally produce collagen to repair itself, resulting in younger looking skin. And there's a few different things that we use this for. And what's nice about this is it's safe on all skin types and skin tones. This is probably the only treatment modality minus Botox and fillers that is safe for everyone's skin tone. When we get into the lasers, it's really important to make sure we're not causing any damage to the skin. So microneedling can improve wrinkles, acne scars, hyperpigmentation, and overall texture of the skin. It can help reduce the appearance of pore size. It restores tone and texture in general. And like we said, promotes collagen and elastin production. With the treatment, there's two ways to get it done. So the standard treatment is with hyaluronic acid, which will help naturally pump up the skin, almost like those fillers, but topically. And those fill into those channels that we create, which also helps enhance even more. Or it can be done with something called PRP, which is platelet-rich plasma. So that's where we take a little bit of your blood and spit it down and we use that as your glide 
um, this promotes more collagen production because that is what platelets do. They promote collagen and it does help shorten the healing time as well. So here's a video of microneedling, what you can expect. This patient is numbed. We numb people beforehand. So she's not feeling anything. It just sounds louder. So you really more hear the treatment than feel it. You hear, feel, I guess more of a hear of the vibration, yeah. but it's definitely not painful. You'll come in about 45 minutes earlier. We'll put some topical numbing on you. You hang out, read a book, hang out on your phone. And then we come in and we start the process and you don't feel it at all. Then here's an example of a before and after photo. So the Sorry. The other thing about microneedling that we didn't talk about is it does take multiple treatments. So we recommend anywhere from three to six, depending on how, what your desire is or what your goal is. Acne scars definitely take more treatments. If you're looking more for texture and tone and you want to just kind of induce the collagen twice a year, then you don't have to do it every month. But if we, like she had a goal to get rid of the hyperpigmentation, we were doing it monthly for multiple treatments. We also do give you something called a post-care kit, which includes a wash, a moisturizer, some more hyaluronic acid, and some sunscreen. They're completely 100% mineral based, so we want to make sure that we're preventing any hyperpigmentation while you're healing. So it's about five days of healing time that you'll use this post-care kit. That post-care kit is included in your first treatment and should last you for a full three sessions. So the IPL, now we're moving into laser. So as Alexa was saying, lasers um, are truly targeted to specific pigments or basically different colors of the skin. So you can't use this if you're very hyperpigmented, which we need to kind of consult you to see what you can do is microneedling better, things like that. So the IPL, which stands for intense pulse light, is used to treat brown spots. So kind of like people call the liver spots or the age spots. Um, it does also work on freckles and it delivers a pulse of bright light. And then that spot will absorb it and it will kind of crumble it off over the course of a few days to weeks. It just feels like a hot rubber band snap. It's not super painful. It's a little shocking, but it's not by any means painful. So what do you expect with an actual IPL treatment? With this, it does take multiple sessions. One is not necessarily enough. We use aloe on the skin just before the procedure and we give you eye protection. Like Brianna mentioned, it is a bright light. So we wanna make sure that you are completely protected. I do usually tell my patients too, to close your eyes as well, just for that extra sense of security. The spots as they're healing or immediately after the treatment as well will become almost red or a darker brown, which is totally normal. And then over the next five to seven days, the spots will continue to darken and eventually flake up. These can also be covered with makeup, so it's not a big deal if you have somewhere to go, put some foundation or cover up on, no problem. The big thing to know with these spots is, especially if they are caused by the sun, they can recur. So sun uh, sun protection is of the utmost importance, especially immediately after the treatment. You want to use sun protection for about two weeks. Um, but moving forward, a lot of these spots are caused from chronic sun exposure. So we want to make sure that they're not coming back constantly. And another treatment might be needed, say, in a year or so, depending on how much exposure you have to the sun. So this is an example of a patient. This was her big spot of concern you can see and then after her treatment it's still a little pink at the time of the picture but it's completely removed so the pulse dye laser is a little different where this one targets vascular lesions or so more of the red lesions um broken blood vessels which some people have a lot on like their cheeks and on their nose rosacea which is just overall redness and port wine stains Warts, I know you probably don't think of as vascular, but they do have a blood supply that we almost suffocate it by killing that blood supply. So with this type of treatment, it almost feels like a spritz of cold and then a spritz of warm, and it's done over an instant. So it's not like you feel cold and then a second later you feel warm. It's done all immediately, and they're individual pulses, and they're almost about the size of an eraser. It can create like a small red to purple area on the skin. After the treatment, it feels almost warm like a sunburn. So we can give you an ice pack or you turn the air on in your car, open the windows, depending on what time of, of year it is. 
Um, and healing time can vary. It can vary from one to two weeks to completely heal. Um, if a full face treatment is done, which is primarily done in rosacea, there actually can be some swelling as well. So we'll recommend to our patients to have an extra pillow while you're um, going to bed for the next or that night and the night after. Just like the IPL, multiple sessions are needed. It's not just a one quick stop. So this top picture is an example of something called a port wine stain, which is a vascular growth. This patient, this was her before we even got started. And then this was after about six treatments. So she's had a lot of treatments here that you can see and it has progressed beautifully. This patient, um, you can see she has a little bit of rosacea on her cheeks, which has significantly improved as well. Again, multiple treatments were done here and she still even has a little bit left over. So something to be aware of. So hair laser is kind of what it sounds like. It's used to treat unwanted hair anywhere on the body. We do stay away from eyebrows, nose, and hairline. Um, basically, it targets the contrast between the color of the hair and the patient's skin color. So if you're pale with white hair or blonde hair, it's not going to work because there's no contrast. It works best on somebody who is pale and has dark hair. Um, again, not safe for all patients. So we usually do test sites on patients who are a little bit more dark, just to make sure that they're not gonna have damage from the hair laser. Multiple sessions are needed and hair is not completely permanently removed when treatment is done. You'll still have some, uh, but not much. Sometimes people need touch-ups every few years, but, but it's definitely the best option we have. Yeah. Um, so during the hair laser treatment, it all varies in length, basically depending on what treatment area you do. The leg has larger surface area than the underarm, so obviously that takes more time. We put aloe on the skin to keep it cool, and then it's like a little laser that you press a little trigger, and it's a zap. So it feels kind of like a rubber band snap, but once the pulse is complete, you're not going to have lingering pain. Maybe red after treatment, hairs eventually thin out, and then they fall off. Um, we schedule the sessions one month apart so that the hair follicles have time to grow. And what's important is you can't wax or thread or pluck in between treatments because we need that hair follicle. You also have to stay out of the sun for two weeks. So you want to be mindful, especially in the summer, about vacations and timing of the hair laser. Um, skin laser or laser skin rejuvenation or also known as a CO2 laser is a procedure using carbon dioxide and a skin surface removing laser or an ablative laser. So they're combined in their treatment. Um, this is definitely the most invasive laser that we have in our office in terms of downtime, but it does treat a, much, uh, a large array of different things. So it can treat wrinkles, it can treat scars, so traumatic scars or surgery scars. It can treat acne scars, brown spots, and some stretch marks. Um, it's about two weeks of downtime is what's to be expected. And again, this is not safe for all skin types. So when you do a CO2 treatment, what are you expecting? So you're numbed about 45 minutes beforehand, which is super important since this laser can still almost feel like a bee sting or a little pinch when we're doing it, even with the numbing. Eye protection is provided and we also use suction because of the CO2, it can create some extra smoke. So we wanna make sure that you don't feel like you're, in, you're breathing in your, your burnt skin. Um, the treatment will be, the area will be pretty much bright red, like you had a bad sunburn and almost crusty brown for about a week. After the second week, it's usually like a faint pink color. Um, some swelling can occur, um, especially if it's a full facial treatment. So again, just like the PDL laser, we ask that you elevate your head afterwards so that way it doesn't feel like it pools or puffs around your eyes. Some pain can occur because it also feels pretty tight afterwards. So Tylenol should be good and ice packs. Vaseline is very important. We don't want this area to dry or scab. So keeping it very hydrated with something thick and greasy is exactly what we want. Sunscreen is mandatory. We want to make sure that we don't have any hyperpigmentation because we're creating and basically taking off that top layer of skin and giving you a brand new layer of skin. So the last thing we want is for it to be brown and have to use another laser. Sun avoidance is recommended, but if you have to go out, sunscreen is okay. Um, 
it does take about six months to see the full treatment. We usually have people come back a week later just to see how you're healing, but collagen will continue to develop over six months. So this is an example of a before and after for stretch marks. Stretch marks are really hard to treat, but you can see here, it actually even helped tighten her skin slightly and it did help reduce the appearance of them. You can still see them. Yes, this is not 100% perfect, but this patient, this was her goal. She was really happy to see um, the skin tighten and the reduction of this improve. The next pictures that we're going to go through are of a patient as she's healing. So you'll kind of get to see an example of what it's like. So this was the picture before. So before we did the treatment, this here was immediately after. So you can see she's already red, a little bit crusty. We do put aloe on immediately after. This was the next day, so you see that bright red and brown. Then we had the weekend, and then this was um, day four. So you can see already that it peeled really nicely. She has that like pinkness here. I know this looks a little bit scary, but knowing that we can get to this is definitely a good feeling, right? This was day five. So again, really just that uh, faint pale pink. You can still see it, but it's way less involved than how it was immediately the next day after. And then this is three months later. So let's take a look at the before and after. So she didn't really need much. She was young already. Um, didn't really have a lot of wrinkles or anything like that. But if you look at the lines around her mouth in particular, I know this photo is a little bit dark, but you can see how much improved this is, how, how less deep these lines are under the eyes improved. And overall, the texture of her skin just looks better. So tattoo removal is something we also offer here. It basically delivers the shortest pulse duration of all the laser. So that's why it's the pico tattoo, because it's one picosecond, which is equal to one trillionth of a second. Um, when you deliver the pulse that quickly, as it's targeting the energy, it creates a fracture to the tattoo ink into minuscule little particles. So it's able to target multiple different colors, easiest being black, most difficult being green and blue. Yeah. So when you come in for a Pico laser treatment, what do you expect? So the laser will hurt if we don't numb you. So depending on the size of the tattoo will depend on if we do topical numbing beforehand, if you do that at home, or if we do local numbing in the office, primarily we can get away with local numbing, which just feels like a pinch and burn, but it makes a world of a difference when you're getting the procedure done. Because once you're numb, it just really feels like a tapping feeling. It doesn't feel like pinches or burns or anything like that. Depending on the size of the tattoo, it will determine the duration of the laser treatment. So it can be anywhere from 15 minutes to 30 minutes. While the, after the procedure is done, the tattoo will almost appear frosted, appear frosted, like there'll be a white shine over it, which is totally normal. And it'll begin to turn more brown and black over about a few days. It's basically the care for it is like when you got the tattoo done. Vaseline should be applied multiple times a day to again, keep it from scabbing. Healing can take anywhere from three to six weeks. So usually depending, um, Appointments can be scheduled monthly or even every other month, depending on how long it takes to heal. Some swelling can be seen the day after. It's not terrible, but especially in smaller areas, like I've seen it on the wrist or the ankles, you get some swelling. And with this, for sure, multiple sessions are needed, especially if, like Brianna mentioned, blues and greens are more difficult to treat. So those spots could necessarily be lingering and the blacks and pinks and reds might be gone. So it really just depends. Um, but anywhere between six to 12 treatments really just depends. So this is an example of a patient who had a black tattoo here. She only had four treatments done, but you can see it's a significant improvement. She probably could have used one more, but she was happy with her results and it really did make a big difference. Um, I do want to point out, you can see that she did have a few stretch marks. So that's kind of why it it obscures this a little bit, but still that this wasn't created by the, the laser, but you can see how nicely the black faded. And then this gentleman, first he tried to chemically burn it off and then we discussed that we needed to do this properly and safe and cleanly and the 
as clean as possible without totally burning his entire skin off. Um, but this was about six treatments for him. And you can see maybe there's a little bit um, lingering of, of excess whiteness here, but it really made a big difference where you can't even really see the tattoo anymore. So the next thing we're going to talk about is away from lasers and we're just going to briefly go over cool sculpting. So our office recently received the new cool sculpting elite machines, which use the most advanced technology to free away the fat. What's really nice about cool sculpting is there's no needles, no numbing, no downtime, no being put to sleep. Um, it's completely non-invasive. Basically the applicators are applied to the body and there's a cold sensation about, I don't know, two to three minutes, and then eventually it'll go numb. They stay on the body anywhere from 35 to 75 minutes, depending on which part and the location being treated. Patients can see up to 20 to 25% fat reduction in as little as four weeks with the elite machines, but full effects are seen about 12. So this is kind of a picture of all the areas that we treat. Um, you have the chin. Oh, you want to go with them? Okay. So we can treat under the chin. We can treat on the underarms, kind of like the back bra fat, the flanks, the abdomen, the flanks kind of go in the front and the back, the outer thighs, the inner thighs, um, what we call the banana roll, which is kind of under the butt and right on top of the knees. This is a really good result that a patient had of her abdomen. I, do we know how many cycles she had? I think she had about eight cycles total treated to the flanks and the abdomen. And this was after one session. So this is one, yeah. yeah, this is 12 weeks later, what she expects. She was super happy. Obviously you can see this nice reduction along the part of her flanks. You can see less overhang from her underwear. So she was super ecstatic. It really made a huge difference. And the nice thing about cool sculpting is that your clothes fit much better. Like picture if she had like a pair of like a tight dress on, you're not going to see any of these rolls that she has on the left side. It makes a big difference. And also she didn't notice any weight change. So you won't notice weight change. You'll just notice fat reduction. So she is the same weight in both of these pictures, maybe a few ounces different but it looks completely different. Yeah. So the last thing that's on our list for tonight is sclerotherapy. Sclerotherapy is used to treat spider veins. So it's not for varicose veins. Spider veins are the teeny tiny little veins that you primarily see on your legs. Um, they're caused by leaky valves within the veins, primarily in our legs. Obviously they can be anywhere because we have veins everywhere. We inject the veins with a solution of sodium chloride it can burn. It definitely is a little uncomfortable because what it's doing is irritating that inner lining of the vein and causing it to collapse. Primarily one to two sessions are needed, although the veins will likely um, reoccur because our body is very, very smart and pretty amazing at creating alternative channels. So there is a possibility down the road, hopefully a couple years down the road, but everybody is different that some might recur and might need another treatment. We definitely recommend compression stockings because our veins don't have any way to return blood unless we're actively moving. So the compression stockings act like constant pressure to help really get rid of those veins. Healing time can be about one to two weeks. You can see some bruising, some darkening of the area. So if you have a big event where you have to show off your legs, do it way in advance. So we've got two videos for you to see. So this was a patient's leg. So we're focusing on this little vessel here. So small little injection, and then the solution is push, and you can see how this completely blanches and goes away. It doesn't stay away forever. So this is just an example that we hit the vein exactly like we wanted to. The darkness will come back, but over the next couple of days, it'll be a little bruised appearing, and then it'll fade. And then the next one, you can obviously see here, it's a much bigger vein, but same process. So it's like magic, we make them disappear. That's such a good one. <laughs> Perfect. So that is all we have for you guys tonight. So I saw that there are actually a bunch of questions. So let's pull those up. 
behind somewhere. Let's see, where are they? There they are. Whoa. Got them. Whoa, okay. Wow. Okay. So our first question, what's the best age can to consider fillers or Botox? What brand do you use for Botox or fillers? So age really depends, right? Because it depends on what we're treating. We have a lot of younger people coming in really looking for their lips. I think that's a big Kylie Jenner trend that has really occurred. So um, you can't get fillers unless you're 21 or older without the consent of a parent. So most people are in their mid twenties. Um, so that's kind of when we start to see people start. A lot of the patients that we showed you though, um, they're in their forties or, or older, forties to sixties. So it really varies. Um, a full facial treatment though with fillers or Botox, um, probably more into the fifties or sixties. Um, we use all Juvederm products here in our office. Like Brianna said, they're all hyaluronic acid. They're reversible for some reason. Um, a complication occurs and Botox is almost like Kleenex. It's a brand. So we use Botox products. There's Dysport and Xeom and there's other neurotoxins that are out there, but we primarily use Botox. So our next question is about if I already get fillers in my lips and I needed multiple treatments, would you use the same syringe or would I be charged differently? So the nice thing about the Juvederm products is it has for fillers, I mean, for lips, we have half syringe, which is the 0.5 ml. And then we also have a full syringe. So if you're someone that we don't think is going to be able to handle that full syringe in one sitting, meaning you're going to swell up a lot because you have a small lip to work with, we'll just do the half syringe, have you come back two weeks later once the swelling has calmed down, and then either put in another half, or if you were like, I tolerated it fine, we can do a full. But we don't use, we don't um, save the syringes because they can grow bacteria in them and then we can come up with whole other complications. So you would just be charged per syringe of whatever syringe that we use. Next question, which is better for dark spots? Microneedling or the vampire facial, which was with PRP. Um, and that, okay, so we'll answer that first. So it really depends on your skin tone. Um, if we were to say, Primarily, we're only sticking with microneedling. The PRP is going to give you a little bit better treatment effect because it will continue to help heal and pull out that extra um, pigment that's there. We do have a, another glide that we use or a um, medication that we put on top of the skin called C10, which helps us with dark spots. Um, so what I say, if I had to pick one, you see better results with PRP and microneedling, but you still will see good results with microneedling. And the nice thing about the PRP is because that helps heal, you're able to go deeper with the needles on the microneedling with less of a downtime than if you were to just use the hyaluronic acid. And then after the IPL is done, what SPF do you recommend? Usually I say 50 or greater because we want to make sure those spots don't darken. We usually recommend in terms of skin care, 30 or greater, which would be okay. But I personally say 50 and I give people little samples so they can start to put that on. The better protection and coverage we can give, the better the treatment experience and the better the outcome. Um, if you start getting treatments for sunspot, is it recommended to have a yearly treatment in order to keep the spots away, or would you recommend the IPL two to three times yearly? So the IPL is only going to work on dark spots that are present. It's not a preventative method because it targets pigment. So if you don't have any pigment of dark spots on the skin, it has nothing to hold on to and it's not going to work and you're wasting your money. So we would only recommend to do it when you actually have the brown spots. Um, two to three times yearly, probably not. I would probably say, you know, you let's say you did it after the summer and we did three treatments. Now we're in December and they're all gone. If the brown spots don't come back, there's no reason to do it get, again. So maybe three, four, five years later, you can decide, okay, let's do this again. Yeah. So is microneedling a permanent solution? So what's good about microneedling is it's stimulating collagen. So it's just like any of these other laser treatments without damaging skin. Will it take a little bit more time maybe because we can't go as deep and create as much thermal injury? Yes, but it is a permanent, your body is doing all the work. 
So we're not injecting you with anything. We're just stimulating your body's natural collagen and collagen stays over time. So that's definitely something that you can expect a more permanent solution from. Can you shave in between hair laser treatments? Yes, you can shave, but there does need to be hair present when you come. So I'm not going to tell you not to shave for a whole month. You can shave for maybe the first week or two, but then after that, about a week prior, depending on how fast your hair grows, you do want some stubble there so the laser can target that hair. So what's the difference between microdermabrasion and microneedling? So microdermabrasion is, is a lot more not invasive, but a lot more aggressive. And it depends on what, we don't do microdermabrasion in our office. So it depends on what modality you're using. It's almost like it's peeling off that top layer of skin. So I have found a lot more patients actually have worse outcomes because the healing is a lot worse for them. So I found actually better results with microneedling. A lot of my patients, I feel like after a week or so, their skin is completely glowing and completely radiant. And that's why we don't do microdermabrasion because I haven't seen those results. We haven't really seen great outcomes. Is it possible to great, have great outcomes with microdermabrasion in the right hands? Absolutely. We just haven't felt like it's really done too much for our patients. Uh, what age should we start making collagen and what age should we begin maintenance? So we decrease the amount of collagen we send to our face in about our mid-20s, mid to late 20s. I mean, everybody's different. Probably in your late 20s, I would say 20, late 20s, maybe 30s, you can start doing a microneedling. Maybe if you don't have any scars or any hyperpigmentation you're worried about, you could do it once or twice a year just to increase that collagen production so that you can increase the volume for a longer period of time. But it's really dependent upon your goals. Um, next question. Is the CO2 laser recommended for patients with more pigment or pigmentation issues? Um, not really. We primarily use the CO2 laser really for facial like resurfacing, so tightening, wrinkles, it's an added bonus that we get brown spot reduction. Maybe if someone was treated with the IPL, not really working, really stubborn after three treatments, we might maybe look at looking at a CO2 treatment. You wouldn't expect the results from what we showed you before where you get that browny crusty peeling um, for the whole face, but we can actually target individual brown lesions. They do get still like the IPL where they get brown or red and can kind of peel and look pink underneath afterwards. So primarily I would say it's not the main laser that we use. Again, we also have to be aware of skin tone and type, but it can be used. What tattoo ink does Pico respond best to? It responds best to black, definitely black. Um, how long does cool sculpting last? So cool sculpting, just like microneedling is permanent. Once we remove those fat cells, they're gone. They're not coming back. It doesn't mean with the 75 to 80% of fat cells that are left that you can't gain and lose weight and what's left, but it just, even if you gain weight, it still won't look like you gained a lot of weight in that area because there's still not as much fat that's there, but those fat cells don't have the ability to regenerate unless you're morbidly obese, which we don't usually recommend cool sculpting treatments for. Most of the time we have all our fat cells occur, uh, made by the time we're in our, our teenage years. So, it is a permanent effect. And I think that's it. So thank you for joining us. I hope we didn't bore you too much with all these different cosmetic things. And if you have any more questions, please feel free to come in and visit us. We do have a cosmetic uh, grand opening on Thursday. We I know that it's been very um, overbooked or very popular. So we do have a second day, August 4th. So you can always give us a call. Our number is obviously on our website. Shana put it in for everyone to see. So please feel free to give us a call and we'd love to see you and talk about your cosmetic goals. Awesome, nice to meet you guys. Thank you everyone for joining. Have a great night.